So today we'll discuss about an important topic called spreadsheet. So to begin with spreadsheet, first we should know why spreadsheets are important. So now whenever we are working with our system or a computer, we know that we are always dealing with informations. And those informations includes numbers, characters and different types of calculations. These calculations have greatly contributed to the advancement of computers and different softwares. So the most important software which involves calculation is spreadsheet. There are many examples of spreadsheets and Microsoft Excel or MS Excel is one of the most common or popular spreadsheet that is used. Microsoft Excel or MS Excel is a part of Microsoft Office Suite. So to start with spreadsheet, first let us open the software. So let us type here Microsoft Excel. Now this is a 2007 version. You can start working with whatever version is available with you. So now this is the page of Microsoft Excel. Few basic informations I would like to tell you before starting to work with it. A spreadsheet is a combination of different rows and columns. So these are known as rows and these are known as columns. So whenever one column meets another row, the meeting point of one column and one row is known as one cell. So the sheet is a combination of many different cells together. So as you can see, whenever I clicked on one of the cells, the cell is surrounded by a black border. That means this cell is an active cell. Now active cell will allow you to enter values inside it at this point of time. Other all cells will be inactive. If you try to enter the values in other cells, you will not be allowed to. You will only allow, you will only enter the values inside active cells. Next, since there are so many cells present inside the page and whenever we need to include these cells inside one of the calculations, we need to identify each and every cell inside the sheet. Now how do we identify the cells? We identify the cells by their names. So cell names are also known as cell addresses. How are these cells named? Each and every cell is named by the column name followed by the row number. So for now, the active cell is this one. For this cell, the name of the column is C and the name of the row is 1. So the name of this particular cell will be C1. The name is written already here. If I click here, for this cell, the name is K and the row number is 4. So the name of the cell is K4. Next, we will see this complete Excel page has three sheets inside it, which is by default. Sheet 1, 2, 3. If you want to add more sheets inside it, you can do so. Just by clicking here. You can go on adding the number of sheets you want. The combination of all the sheets together is known as one workbook. Now by default the names are given as sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3 and so on. If you want to change the names of these pages or sheets, how to do that? We will simply 
left click it right click go to rename and give any name that you want to give to the sheet we are giving class so my sheet one is renamed to class next we will learn about a range what is a range what is a range a range is a combination of continuous cells together that means if i want to combine all these four cells together this will be called as one range starting from d2 to G g2 so by range will be named as d2 colon g2 since this range is selected in the row direction it will be called as a row range if i select all the cells which are in the column direction will be called as a column range and if this i select which is a combination of different rows and columns together this will be also called as one range and the starting cell will be m2 and it will be ended in p11 so starting from m2 till p11 all the cells will be included inside the range now whenever i want to include this range inside any calculations i can include it by giving the name as p2 to p11 sorry m2 to p11 but if i find difficult to find out the name of the cells the starting cell and the ending cell what i can do is i can rename the cell how do i rename it i have to select the range right click it go to name a range select and here you can write down the name say test click okay now see the name of this range was changed to test and the test is displayed here so these were some basic informations of an excel software so now we will learn few features to to start with those features first let us create a table any table you can create so let me create a table of different roll numbers names and marks and grade these are the random values any value you want you can enter whatever values you want you can go on entering it now almost all the values have been completed except the roll number the roll number column i purposely did not enter any values to show you one feature of excel if i start entering the roll numbers starting from 1 2 3 4 5 6 that means i want to create a series a continuous series so instead of typing all the numbers one by one what we can do is we can write or we can type the first two numbers of the series then we need to select both the numbers together when we select we see a black box like structure here whenever i move the mouse cursor over this black box it turns into a plus so i need to hold the plus 
and drag and drop it to the place till where I want to display my series. I want to display my series till the seventh row. So I'm dragging and dropping it here. So whenever I dropped the series is created by default. Now this feature of Excel is known as autofill. So now let us learn few more features. So the next feature that I will be talking to you today is hide. So hide means to not display one particular column or one particular row from the table. My intention is not to delete the row or not to delete the column. I only don't want to display it at certain point of time. So now for this table, suppose I don't want to display this names. So what I can do is I have selected the column name. Then I go to home tab. I'm already there in the home tab. Then sales group. From sales group we go to format option. From format option we go to hide and unhide. So from hide and unhide there are two different options. Not two actually three. So since I have selected the column so I will click on hide column now and my name is not displayed on the table now. Also remember one thing that the name column is not deleted. It is only hidden from the table. If I want to unhide it again go to format hide and unhide and unhide columns and my name column is back. Next we go to filter. So what is filter? Filter means to display only a limited information. Limited information in the sense suppose all the grades are present here A1, B1, A2, C2 all. So I suppose want to display only grades with A. It means A1 or A2. So in this case we can filter, we can eliminate all the unwanted uh, numbers or characters. So for that we go to home again, editing group, shorten filter, click on filter, Sorry, this happened because I did not select the column or the row which I want to filter. So first I'll click on or I'll select the column. Then from home we'll go to edit then shorten filter. Click on filter. Then after clicking on filter just besides grade will get a downward arrow. We will click there and these are the values which are filled up inside the grade column. As I told you I only need the grades with A1 and A2 and others I don't need so I am unchecking the other grades. After unchecking it I will click on OK and only two grades are displayed. If I want to remove the filter Again, the same process again, home, editing, shorten filter, simply click on filter and my table will be back. Next thing we will talk about is freezing. Now what is freezing? Freezing means to lock the rows and columns at one place. Now just notice one thing, these are the scroll bars. One towards my left hand side and one at the bottom sorry right hand side and one at the bottom so if I scroll from left to right you can see columns A and B are hidden now only from C the columns can be seen if I scroll right to left 
A and B are back again. Similarly, when we scroll from top to bottom, what happens? All the rows are going up and the rest of the sheet, the numbers which are present below the screen, all the rows and columns are being displayed. We can go on scrolling down or up. Now, what is freezing I told you is locking off the rows and columns at one place. Now, how to lock them? First, we will have to click on view. From view, we go to freeze panes. There are two options. Freeze top row and freeze first column. So, let us work with the top row first. We will click on freeze top row. Now, after clicking on freeze top row, you can see there is a margin displayed here. Now, this margin indicates that the first row of the table is locked. Now, again we repeat the same thing. Let us scroll from top to bottom and see. The page is going up and up, but my first row is still at the same place. This is freezing. Now, if I have to unfreeze it, again, view, then window group. From window group, we go to freeze panes and unfreeze. Done. Next is, in the same way, we can lock the first column also. Let us see. First column, a margin, that means the first column is locked. Let us move from my left hand side towards my right hand side and B is hidden now but A is locked there. Let us unfreeze it again. Okay. Now the last topic or the last feature for today's video will be working with conditional operators or conditional formatting. What is conditional formatting? Now like in filter we eliminated few values from the table and only the wanted values are displayed. Now in conditional operating or in conditional formatting, if we do not want to eliminate the values from the table, instead we want to highlight the features or we want to highlight the numbers. What do we do is, we will click on the home tab, conditional operating, there are many values or many options of conditional operating. We will work with the highlight cell rules. Now, these highlight cell rules, there are again several options. I'll show you one. The rest will be easier for you to do. So, we'll work with only one option. Say, let us work with uh, greater than. We are clicking greater than. Then, we will write what we want to eliminate sorry not eliminate what we want to highlight now before highlighting I did not select the column say let us select marks and we want the marks which are greater than suppose 80 so selected home from styles group we'll click on conditional formatting highlight cell rules greater than then here I'll write 80 because my condition was greater than 80. Now from this you can select your own color. How do you want to highlight? Say I want to highlight with red text. Okay. And from the table the marks which are above 80 are highlighted. So I hope these features are clear to you now and uh, we will end the video here so stay safe and have a nice time thank you